So if we have a carbon with four different things attached, then that carbon will interact with light in a way that will cause it to do something that's easy to detect and measure. It will circularly polarize, polarize light. And so, so what we want to do here is come up with a systematic way to distinguish the two different ways in which that carbon can interact with the light. Um, and we're going to call one R and one S. So basically there are two different ways of constructing this model in three dimensions that are different from each other, even though they're all connected the same. And so I want to show a way to say, this is the one that is this one, and this one is the other one. The way to do that is, we go through and we assign priority to the four different things attached. So this has a hydrogen, a hydroxyl, a propyl, and an ethyl group attached. So what I want to do is I want to assign based on atomic number. So the highest atomic number is going to get the highest priority. So that, in this case, is the oxygen. It has atomic number 8 versus 6 versus 6 versus 1. So this would be our first priority. And then this would be our lowest priority. Okay. Then, the next one, I go and I have 6 and 6. So those are a tie. So then I'm going to move out again and I have a 6 and, a, and, a, and some 1s. But in this one, I have one more 6. And so this is going to be my second priority. So you keep following out the chain to see who will have the highest atomic number at each next step. Okay. And then this one would be my third priority. And then what you need to do is you need to orient yourself in a way that you can pretend you're looking at this molecule where you're looking towards the molecule of four behind it. So four currently, the hydrogen is out here in front. So I need to be behind the board looking kind of down at the diagonal. And that's extremely difficult to do. But essentially, I'm going to be back here behind the board. So when I do that, what I'm going to see is I'm going to see the carbon with this hydrogen off in the distance. And then when I look at that, I'm going to see this, this propyl group here up, and I'm going to see this one is actually behind the board. So if I'm looking over there and it's behind the board, it's going to be to my left. And so that one priority is there, and then the third priority is going to be at the diagonal, it's going to be off and to the right. Now when you set that up, if your numbers go clockwise, one, two, three, then what you've, what you've done is determine that that's an R stereocenter, okay? And if they go counterclockwise, then it will be us. So that's how you have to go through and do it. Now it's very difficult to perceptually put yourself into this paper that's two-dimensional of a three-dimensional picture from the opposite angle and kind of see how that works. If I look at it this way, clearly that one, two, three, I'm going counterclockwise, but I am behind the board when I do my view. And so you have to set yourself up as far away as possible. First priority, fourth priority, second priority, third priority. So again, I'm behind the board. This time I would be behind the board and kind of up and to the right. And I'm looking back down at the carbon. So here's my carbon. The four is behind it. Okay. Now if I'm over here, I'm going to see a one to my right. I'm going to see the three to my left and the two above. And so now I'm looking at counterclockwise, and therefore that would be S. Okay. This one, priority would be easy to assign. It would go one, two, three, four. So again, I'm behind the molecule. I need to see the, the fluorine. Now, the other way you can, there are many ways to do this. One of the ways you can do, what I like to do is I like to pretend I can stick my thumb where the four is, and then can I curl my fingers on my right hand around from one to two to three. So for this one, I would say my thumb is going out. If I start at the one, then I would curl down and that would take me to two and then to three. So this is going to be R. Now if you try with your left thumb and get this to work, now I curl from the one to the three to the two and that doesn't work. If your left hand works, it'll be S. If your right hand works, it'll be R. Um, this one, I have a priority four, one. This one, I got tie, tie, winner. So this would be two, because there's a bromine there and a carbon on the other one. Uh, and so this one, I'm actually just standing right here. This is nice and easy. I can just go from one to two to three. This would be R. So that's how you go ahead and assign these. And then, and then after that, the follow-up questions are many. So if I have, you know, this with another uh, of the same stereoisomer, uh, but it could be R or S. If if one is R and the other one is S for the same molecule, that would be an enantiomer set. Um, if I have something with two of these and I have an RR and an RS, those would be uh, diastereomers. So based on once you've assigned RS, there's a lot of information that you could pull from that. 
This is how you assign whether something is R or S.